Street who actually presented. The technology was so captivating to me that I decided I wanted to work on that. At that time, I was working at Google's core product, ads and commerce, but I got VP approval to start working on augmented reality uh, as a 20% project. I built up lots of partnerships, and eventually, the person who hired me into Google approached me and offered me a full-time position, and so this is how I got there. And as a feedback to you, um, as you probably all right before you start working, is pick the product you're really passionate about, find your way in, and don't let it go. So, I want to talk briefly about why augmented reality, then from a technical perspective, what's behind it, and then from a business pers perspective, what can you actually do with augmented reality. So, let's just start right into it. So, why augmented reality? There is a great quote from Harvard professor Michael Porter. He once said that AI makes devices smarter and AR makes people smarter. And I like that a lot because if we look back, we accumulated so much information since, since the existence of the PCs that it's hard to digest all that information in a nice way. I remember my grandparents, when they run their business back then, they gathered all their receipts from every day uh, then went to the book and wrote all, all the transactions in there. Um, and we gather tons of information like that. So how can we actually make use of that? If we think about our five senses that we have, from vision to um, tasting, the one that has the highest input capability in bits per, per second is our vision. So eyes is what is really the key, which is really the gate from us to actually the real world. And that is why augmented reality will be so important because it will actually help us to digest all the information um, that we can and that we want to receive. And also, AR is very intuitive. If you just see it, you don't need a handbook anymore. It just speaks to you. So, to the second point, so how does that actually work? So I'm a mechanical engineer by background, and for me it's always interesting to see how the technologies actually work, despite our work now on the business side. So, for augmented reality, what I want to step back and actually not look at the rendering technology, but rather what is working in the back end and how that works. So, Let's take a step back. So if you want to um, superimpose information on the real world, you need to know where you are, and you need to know in which direction you look at. So the first problem that we need to solve is position. And we know that quite often, so this is very smooth, you probably know you're at the corner of those two streets, but very often the blue dot is jumping around quite, quite a bit. And so this is the first problem that, we, that we've got to solve with um, if we want to have really cool AR experiences. So how do we do that? Um, or what's the problem behind it? I mean, localization works through our GPS and orientation through our compass. But GPS is oftentimes broken, especially in areas where we need it most. In areas like cities, uh, where uh, radio signals are interfered or reflected by skyscrapers or different sculptures. So it's hard to know where we are. And from the compass, we have seen it oftentimes, it usually uh, shows you um, that you would look into the right opposite direction because it's, um, yeah, it's inter interfered by um, all the different magnets. That is why there is an additional technology called VPS. VPS is, stands for Visual Positioning Servicing. And what it actually does, it looks quite simple. So what it does is your phone actually sees all the different feature points, meaning visually characteristic points, um, and compares them with all the imagery that we captured years over years with, with Street View and we have on the cloud. By comparing the two, you would know where the user is and you would know in which direction the user looks at. And by that, 
we could finally have really cool augmented reality experiences at a world scale. I said it looks super simple, and it does, but the reality behind that is actually that it's very, very tough. Um, imagine there is snow and you don't detect the feature points. Imagine there are trees with lots of leaves in the summer in between you and the buildings. So there are lots of things that we would need to, um, that we need to adjust for. And now, what can we actually do with augmented reality? Um, one thing that I mentioned at the beginning is, wouldn't it be cool if you could know where actually south is, and instead uh, it tells you to head south, you could actually get um, navigation um, right away. That is a feature that we started to roll out a few weeks ago. I'm not sure whether you're local guides on Google Maps, but if you are, and if you are, I think right now we're at level six or seven plus, then you could actually um, switch to the AR mode and get your navigation in the world like that. What's important for us here is that we don't have AR as a complete constant mode, but as AR moments. So you could get the right information wherever you need it, but you would not want to walk like this all the time. Um, another way how AR is really helpful is it can actually help you to surface information. Like, you would not need to um, look up opening hours of the sandwich place, but it could be triggered right there. Or um, there was an experiment uh, last year that we had uh, using a fox that could actually navigate you. <laughs> but augmented reality um, is also vivid in other products, not only in Google Maps, and it's not only location-based. So this is a feature that you can test in Google Lens. Uh, it's been active since a while. So what you can do is, imagine you're sitting in a restaurant and you want to know what that is. I mean, Bouillabaisse, probably you all know, but imagine you're in a Japanese restaurant and really have no idea what to order. Instead of figuring out what that is, you could simply point your phone to it and it would trigger you all the information that you would need in order to make a decision whether you like that or whether you don't. Or um, also not location based, but imagine you just want to receive information on objects around you, like uh, on a book for instance, or um, on a plan. So as soon as you see the dots, it knows that it can trigger information to you. Um, you're, imagine you're at a friend's place and just want to know, okay, this, this couch is really cool. I, ought, I actually want to have that as well. Just point the lens to it and get all the information that you need on it. So it's a nice feature for all the people that are very curious and would like to better understand the real world around them. Now, I would like to roll a short video that actually shows what we have done based on Google Tango um, a while ago, but it's a neat illustration of how augmented reality can be useful. Well, uh, here we are inside, and if you're anything like me, you get to these places and you're like, oh my god, where do I even start? But fortunately, I happen to have a Tango phone right here, which is going to help me get from product to product by exactly what I need, way faster than I normally would get here. So let's have a look here. Okay, so I'm just going to open up the Lowe's app here and then pull up my shopping list. Now, this stuff is all over the store, and normally you'd be like, where is any of it? But with this, what I can do is just navigate in my phone. It's going to tell me, okay, we're over this way. Seventy-five foot outdoor extension work. Okay, we got that next. Okay. Very good. Number nine. Got it. Orange 
As I mentioned, augmented reality can also help you to know the real dimensions of objects. So imagine you want to uh, buy a new chair, and what you could do is, for e-commerce, just place it in your living room, turn it around, see how it fits from the dimensions, change the coloring, change the texturing, and instead of nowadays when you want to buy a sofa or a couch, you get just a small piece of cloth. Instead, you could actually zoom in with your phone and see how it really looks like. So way more seamless experience. And another experience also built on Google Tango, and it also helps in the automotive industry if you want to take your car. So um, you want to see how it really looks like, then this can actually help. Michael, come. Do you want to see my new car? What are, you, what are you talking about? I can't see a car. I'm talking about the future. Here, have a look. That's brilliant. Wow, well, stick with blue, your favorite color. And silver rims, as you like them. Want to have a look inside? Sure. This is great. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Reality helps you also to make objects alive and see them. As we're at the hackathon, <laughs> I would like to close with a remark from one of the greatest ice hockey players in the world, from Wayne Gretzky. And he said, Good players skate to where the book is, but great players skate to where it's going to be. And as you have all been here, as, as you have wandered through 35 hours of intense work. I think you're the ones who actually go to where the puck will be. And this is my, um, my advice for you. Don't stop where the puck is, but always try to go to where it's going to be. Thank you. Thank you. 
don't have a second winning team since during the event we developed the second challenge. And um, there is um, the second team we want to invite to you. It's a brief uh, view. A brief point, sorry. Hello everyone. Um, so first of all, the um, 
We'd like to thank uh, Star Tech uh, organization for uh, giving us this opportunity. And um, we had a, a challenge which seems to be very simple with only five sets of data. Uh, the crash simulation. Um, we had six teams, five submitted their um, results, and two came very close. And uh, the whole jury, uh, two of us and two independent, we all came on to the same conclusion. And the winner is. <laughs> IPv5. And um, as a CTO of Autosense, I just want to also promise that it's not just an uh, uh, experiment or a thought process or just uh, uh, a Star Trek uh, project. We will uh, like to continue it further and see how this work can come to the business and deploy it for customers.
Trey Dabler. So we have um, a little bit AI in one device for you. For each of you, we have some drone. Thank you. My voice has really improved. 
Um, first of all, thanks a lot to the SARC team for organizing this fantastic event and all the effort you put in. Then our second thank you on behalf of Microsoft goes to all of you to make spending your weekend here, travel from far to come here and spend great time, a lot of know-how, great ideas in all the different projects. So thanks a lot Woo! for being here. And last but not least, also thanks a lot for your overwhelming interest in our case, um, AI for Good. So thanks a lot for that one. So it was very, very hard, and you know that not everybody could make into our, uh, could join our challenge, so apologies for that one. And we also want to call out Ace, um, please come afterwards at our roof, we would like to speak to you again. And then part of the official competition was very hard, but we had anonymously, across all the church, five churches in the room, one winner. Guys from Please you. You did a tremendous job. Thanks a lot. device for Leica. 
And what this enables is basically that we can measure points um, in our view with great accuracy. And we leverage that by identifying key points in the image um, on our site that will be useful to estimate our position. So our camera then also looks for these points and estimates its position to model some um, architectural models in the building. Yeah, that's basically everything we've got time for, so thanks. <laughs> Not many people are going to use it. 
through that we can maximize the usage of the cars all over. So based on the data we collect with such an application, in the first couple of months we can create a heat map which detects where, the, where we see the areas uh, where a lot of people are going are gonna to use the car. And, um, <laughs> And then comes the third part, which is <laughs> which is the nugget. So, so bye. Thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> Call the Volvo. Go places. Thank you so much.
ceremony. Um, I want to do a very uh, quick shout out to our team members from START, from START Summit. You should have received a code already. Uh, if you don't know, in two weeks' time, there's START Summit taking place. It's a two-day conference in St. Gaon for entrepreneurship and technology. We'd be happy to see many of you there. Um, it's a great event with many great different formats. So uh, hit us up. Um, we also have some codes for you to get better ticket price because we really appreciate you being here and uh, would love for you, for you to come again. So then obviously we want to thank very much the university for letting us host this event here year after year. So it's been the third time for us doing this hackathon here at the university. So thank you to our uh, rector and to all the professors supporting us. And uh, thank you very much. Also, I want to very much welcome the house, uh, thank the house beans. They are always supporting us, always helping us when help is needed. So thank you very much. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. And now, the biggest thank you of all goes to my team, Start Hack team. So please come on, on stage. I'm so happy to have experienced this year with you. Um, so please give a round of applause for Joel and Caro for the participants team. I'll enjoy it very much. And then finally, um, obviously START is not just us six, but it's many more people who have supported us all this weekend long. You might have seen them with their shirts on. Uh, I see a lot of faces in the audience right now, which is why I want to welcome all of them on stage here for supporting us and for doing this all together. So thank you so much to all of you.